Hi all, good evening. Hope you all can hear me. You can just please respond in the chat box if you are able to hear me. The participants who are joined can please respond if you are able to hear me in the chat box so that I can just get a confirmation from you and proceed with the session. The participants are requested to confirm in the chat box whether I am able to hear. Am I audible? Okay, thanks for your confirmation, Nabihal, Nabila. So we'll start with the session. So uh, the webinar is all about uh, exploratory data analysis uh, uh, as a part of uh, data science, which is a more important uh, uh, topic when I say uh, exploratory data analysis. Uh, why we need to have some analysis on the data that is more important. So we'll start with understanding the uh, main concept before uh, getting into the actual topic objectives. So we'll just understand by the uh, uh, main concept. So I'll just share uh, the other uh, window where you can just go through the mind map of uh, data science, what exactly we have uh, under the project management methodology, what we follow in data science. So when we when it comes to uh, data science, it is uh, something which is related to data as 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 always. So more number of data uh, will have some uh, landing up with a conclusion or uh, decision making or any predictions. So for making this or understanding the data itself uh, takes a lot of time or I can say data pre-processing, data cleansing takes more time. So uh, what I can say is uh, when we uh, analyze uh, uh, data, uh, what do you uh, come to a conclusion? What do you uh, uh, get to know of each from the data? So if, if it is non-numeric, what you'll do? If it is numeric, what you'll do? So like that, we have uh, different cases when we de deal with our data. So when I say project management methodology, we have uh, uh, different methodologies that will be followed. Uh, so best one is uh, CRISP-DM, um, which is uh, uh, ultimately known as uh, uh, data science uh, methodology. So when I say CRISP-DM, the full form is cross industry standard process for data mining. So you can just make a note of it. CRISP-DM is cross industry. Uh, uh, standard process for data mining. So as the name itself says that you are something dealing with data mining for uh, mining, you just do, uh, do required tools and other analysis skills uh, as a statisticians. Uh, you just need to uh, uh, deal with always uh, data. So now uh, coming back to the main objective, what you can just uh, uh, be aware. So I'll just share the uh, mind map of uh, data science where you can see literally the crisp dm has uh, different steps in uh, understanding the data and landing up with the decision so first is understanding the business problem so whenever you deal with clients and asking them to give the objectives and uh, what is their problem and what do they require so we just need to sit with the clients and understand what they do require so that is more important when we analyze uh, uh, as a part of uh, data mining. So data understanding, uh, data understanding is different. Uh, business problem understanding is different. Okay. So we just need to understand the first step as business problem uh, whenever we deal with or whenever we uh, 
uh, start with the project uh, we we just need to understand with the client as a business problem and later coming back to the next step is understanding the data whether uh, the data is raw material or uh, um, uh, what kind of data type you have whether it is numeric or in uh, non numeric whether it is continuous or discrete so what kind of data you have you just need to analyze and then step into the actual process uh, cleaning the process uh, cleaning the data so this step is uh, more important in data science or data analytics where uh, more number of uh, uh time will be spent here in uh, data pre processing rather, rather i can say data cleaning so why it takes more time so if 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 there is a, a excel sheet you can just easily analyze uh, in one sheet uh, you can just easily go through the data and then come up with a solution but what happens if you are linked with uh, too many data and uh, you need to uh, dependent on the other uh, things and then need to have uh, plenty of things to deal with so uh, data size varies a lot so from kb to terabyte or petabyte so always you just need to understand what kind of data you are using so cleaning the data is takes a time so rather i can say directly so apart in that in that cleaning process we have exploratory data analysis as a main heart of uh, data mining or i can say data science where you just need to understand the uh, different moments uh, as a uh, decision making so first moment decision uh, second moment decision third moment decision fourth moment decision and graphical representation so whenever you have a data in numeric uh, or non numeric in a spreadsheet if you provide the same to the client so it is not so good to uh, understand uh, well uh, when we give or serve something uh, which is untidy or uh, which is randomly provided for them without any uh, uh representing or presenting in a neatly way so we just do required uh, after cleaning everything data you just need to represent that in a, a neat way with a graphical notation so for that what do you required a uh, uh, graphs are required yes of course excel is a part of a uh, uh, data analysis uh, tool that we have already but when we have a large or huge data so when it comes to big data so it is not so good to have that tool to have these kind of uh, uh, decisions uh, to come across so when i say first moment decision it is measures of central tendency now what is this meaning what is the meaning of uh, measure of central tendency so measure of central tendency is all about saying that uh, uh, the process of understanding the data uh, before uh before cleaning the data so that is what we say measure of central tendency so what what is the capability of uh, capability of a uh, data so so you you just need to summarize whatever the data that you have given in a single value so how do you do that <clears throat> let's say example i'll give you uh, a statistics of uh, players statistics of a uh, players now uh Uh, the the excel sheet contains everything uh, that is batsman bowler and uh, uh, all rounder so how do you segregate this how do you segregate this based on the column uh, that you have if uh, the batsman have uh, eaten more runs and uh, there is no wicket much wicket then you can easily understand that the person is a uh, uh, batsman Uh, what he has consistency in uh, batting average so you can just easily analyze that he is a batsman what happens if he is taking more wickets the player is taking more wickets then he can you can easily understand he is a bowler so sometimes all rounder takes more wickets also uh, on an average wickets and uh, and uh, some consistency in batting so i'm using various words like consistency and average so thinking that uh, these words are suitable when you are dealing with the data and analyzing whether the player is batsman or a bowler or all rounder so we have few words that is with respect to average 
the which is mean by uh, which is which is having a meaning like arithmetic mean or i can say mean value so when i talk about a central tendency it is all about <coughs> measuring the mean median and mode now what do you think the importance of these mean median and mode when i say mean median and mode these three are important pillars in understanding the uh, data set or i can say best way to summarize the data set with a single value so if i give a uh, 10 batsman and uh, 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 or i can say uh, one single batsman played in 10 matches now what is the average batting average ba like batting average of a batsman in overall 10 matches in a year so how do you do that so you will sum all the uh, uh uh runs scored in each match and then you will divide the uh, same by the total number of matches he played so that gives the consistency or an average of batting score or run scored uh, uh for each uh, match he he hasn't scored uh any single run in one particular match but still you can judge that particular batsman can score uh in each man on an average of 40 50 runs uh, if he is a good batsman with a average uh making it as uh, 60 runs or 70 runs each uh, match so probably we can just also understand the data when a particular batsman got duck out that is he hasn't scored any score in a single match and he has scored 100 in all other nine matches now what is the average of this person or average of uh, the ba batsman so 900 divided by 10 matches now what is the uh, run scored in each or run scored average run scored it is 90 even though you you said the average uh, run scored by a batsman is 90 he has been duck out in one of the match so that doesn't count so you can just decide that particular batsman have an average score of 90 in each match so that gives an uh, 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 decision that uh, the batsman have some consistency uh, we can just neglect those zero uh, when he hasn't scored any run in one of the match so that kind of analysis will give you a picture when i talk about this tendal uh, uh, central tendency the mean value so what does it mean it is also called as average as i said average uh, the consistency will be give, giving out and you can just uh, uh, make sure and understand uh, various things so i'll be giving you at the end of the thing uh, at the end of the session with a uh, uh uh why it is more important uh let's say example why the mean is important why the median is important where application in which all application you will be using that particular things that will be given you at the end of the session so it gets influenced by outliers now what is what do you mean by outliers let me give you one more example let's uh, um, uh there are 10 students who have taken mathematics as a test and all of them have scored uh, uh 30 out of uh, i am sorry uh, fifth, for 50 they have scored uh, above 30 and there is one person who has scored 10 and he has scored in that particular test the first test he has scored 10 and he has uh, uh, not cleared the test and you can just analyze what could be the average uh, uh passing percentage of the classroom so the classroom contains 10 person and out of which they are, all they have scored and the, there is one guy who has left behind as a 10 marks now that 10 particular 10 is just because he hasn't uh, uh uh prepared or he has some other personal issue so he is also a consistency uh, student but still he has some other things which is impacting on the average test score of a classroom or average passing percentage of a classroom so you can judge a classroom based on uh, the passing percentage of uh, all the students 
by taking an average. So that gives you a clear picture. But here, why I'm stressing the student taken a 10 marks out of 50 is nothing but outlier. It is it is not matching with the, all the other test marks scored by the students. Now, now what happens if if outliers is uh, affecting uh, uh, average or I can say, what do you do that at that time? So outliers impacts on median and mean. Now, when I say outliers, outliers is in, in data what it is. What is the meaning of outliers in a data? So it is just an abnormal abnormal value when you consider a random uh, values. Uh, when you consider randomly with the uh, values, you will be having some ab abnormalities. Like I said, uh, the student uh, scored uh, uh, 10 marks. So it is an outlier. So since it is an abnormal value, which has been considered randomly out of all the data set. Now, when I, when I, if I want to give you uh, another example uh, uh, to find uh, uh, or to understand outliers, it is something like, uh, it is uh, something like where you have, uh, where you have a data that is very far away from the all the other values. So it leaves for the it, it, it is left for the analyst whether to consider that abnormality or not to consider that. So not all the data will have abnormalities. So abnormalities uh, abnormalities comes only when you have the data which are not fitted properly. So where there is a variance, the, where there is a variations uh, in the uh, data. So based on the data also, it impacts a lot. So we just need to understand the average when it is affecting, then we can just go ahead with the outliers. Let me give you one simple example. There are five students. I will divide the 10 chocolates to all the stu uh, students. So there are five students. I've divided all the chocolates and I've given two to each and I've distributed them. Now, what is the average of these? So total divided by total. So each one may get one. So that is the average mean. So when I calculate this average, let me take one more example. So I have 50 chocolates. I have five students, five children. So I'll be giving you, uh, I will be distributing each student, each children, uh, two, three, four, five. And I'm very, uh, very much likely to one student. I like very much uh, 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 a child. So I'll be giving you, uh, giving him a 20. So all the other child, uh, all the other children are getting uh, uh, two, three, four, and this one child, child is getting 20. So now can you uh, identify the average? Can you identify the mean? But you have a lot many variation in the mean and median. So when you have a variation in the mean and median, at that time, we can just easily understand the outlier. So you can just decide whether outlier exists or not because outlier is impacting the mean and median. It is lot much affecting, affecting the mean and median. So it is not so good to have outliers. So somehow we need to manage to remove those outliers. So there are different process, uh, procedures and process so that you can just uh, uh, exclude the outliers. So when it comes to median, now what is the value median? So middle most value of the data set is uh, uh, median, what do you call? And what is a mode? So when you call it as mode, it is a bimodal or single model and the value which repeats maximum times. Let's say example, I have divided this chocolates uh, as a numeric. Now what happens if there are few flavors? like choco, man mango, 
pineapple, strawberry, and I, I repeat the strawberry mango twice uh, for the children. Now, what, what do you call as mode? So how many number of times this strawberry and mango or the frequency of the number of distributed values. So that could be considered to be as a mode. So when it is non-numeric, you can just consider mode. When it is numeric, you can just go with mean or median. So most of the times we'll go with mean. When it is affecting the outliers, we can just analyze and consider median. So this is what we call it as measure of central tendency. So now we'll just decide on real time examples by considering the real time examples where this mean, median and mode is affecting or it is impacting in our day to day life. Let me give you one simple example where <clears throat> The insurance will be provided to all the people. So based on what criteria the insurance will be given. So the mean, median and mode are widely used by insurance analysts. And also the statisticians used in the healthcare industry. So how this mean is used by insurance analysts? It is often calculate the age of the individuals the average age of the individuals they provide insurance for so they can know the average age of their customers so to calculate the age of the customers it is used so median so statisticians often calculate the median that is amount of spend amount spent on healthcare each year by an individual so, so they, they can know how much insurance they need to be able to provide to an individual. So the insurance company need to analyze and get the confirmation from this median value, how much they need to provide this, uh, provide the amount to the individuals when they are spending the amount to the healthcare each year. So based on that criteria, we can just use or we can, we can just come to a conclusion. And also we have mode. So this mode is also used by uh, statisticians where they can uh, get which group, which age group uses their insurance the most. So it is easy to analyze uh, these three things by using these things, these three things, mean, median and mode. So mean is giving a, a opportunity to calculate the age of the individual. They provide insurance so that they can uh, understand the average age of their customers. The mode is also under making them to analyze uh, which age group is uses, using their uh, insurance the most. And the medium, median is helping how, how the insurance they need to be able to provide to an individual. So this insurance company is going to analyze based on this mean, median and mode. So you can just analyze how important the mean median and mode or measure of central tendency in data science is more important when it comes to insur insurance company and also the real estate agents also do require this now how this mean is helping real estate agent so real estate agent is calculating the average price of their houses of of their locality so average price of the houses in a particular area can confirm their clients on what they expect to spend on the house. Let it be there are two areas. So there are uh, more number of houses in one area and the less number of houses in one area. So by considering the average price of all the houses in that particular area, he can fix one value and then he can confirm that this value, this area has more number of house and you will be paying the uh, uh, the field price or the land price is more when it compares to the more number of houses. When it comes to less number of area, the less number of houses in that particular area, then you can just fix one value by considering the price of the land by taking the average price of the land and you can just confirm the customer what is the price 
so the average calculating the average is important in all the field and it is helping the real estate agent to fix the value or the price to their client now how median is helping real estate agent it is helping to to calculate the median price of house to gain better idea of the typical home price so you, you can just tell me that median is less influenced by outliers than how to compare with the uh, mean so it is it is helping the agents to calculate the median price of house to gain the better idea of the typical home price let's say example you have single bhk double bhk apartments condo and everything so based on different criteria of, or based on different category of a home you can just de decide on what basis the uh, customers do required so the median is compared to the mean and it has been decided so now mode how this mode is helping the real estate agents so it calculates the mode in the number of bedrooms per house so they can inform their clients on how many bedrooms they can expect to have in a house in a particular area. So this is how mean median mode is helping real estate agents. So like this, you have plenty of examples that what we can give on this central tendency that is helping us a first business decision. Now, coming back to the second moment decision that is measures of dispersion. Now, variance, standard deviation, and range. Now, what is the importance of variance, standard deviation in real life? So, standard deviation is something what we need to understand when we are using uh, uh, data to predict something. So, when you are predicting and landing up with some decision making, so you do require standard deviation and variance. Now, the word variance itself says that you do require some calculation based on some information provided by the data. So when I say measure of dispersion, it is all about calculating or the uh, uh, identifying the most representative value of the data set. Let's say example in the range uh, uh, what is the difference between the highest value and the smallest value? So it is better to describe the data. It is also good to have a measure of spread of the data around the uh, distribution. So that is we referred it as measure of dispersion. So when you have this kind of measure of dispersion, it is easy to calculate the range. It is easy to calculate the variance. It is easy to calculate the and uh, it is easy to calculate the standard deviation. Now I will tell you what are the different applications that we use, uh, use using uh, measuring the standard deviation. So standard deviation is helping in weather forecasting. Have you come across this? Have you come across uh, any anywhere? Uh, uh, good evening, Vampati. I haven't checked with the... Uh, chat box sorry for that so we have started uh, 5 30 and i was not aware of that you have uh, joined the session so we were discussing about the mind map like how we have started with analyzing the business problem and then data st data understanding understanding the data and then we landed up with uh, data exploratory analysis so exploratory data analysis is most important process where we have a first moment, second moment, third moment, fourth moment and graphical representation of those. Uh, things. So when I, I consider this are uh, important in analyzing the data and then we are in a second moment business decision where we have variance standard deviation and range why now we are discussing why these are important when i say standard deviation it is important in weather forecasting so standard deviation is 
widely used in weather forecasting to understand how much variation exists in daily and monthly temperature in different cities so it is helping a, a weather man who works in a city with a small uh, standard deviation in temperature so it you can you can confidently predict what the weather will be on a given day since temperatures don't vary much from one day to the next so it, you can just easily inform the weather man to work in a city so weather man who works in a city with high standard deviation in temperatures will be less confident in which he, he is uh, prediction becomes there is uh, is uh, is predictions <coughs> there is much more variations in temperature from one day to the next so very small standard deviation helps in understanding whether uh, he can work for the next day or not when you have high standard deviation it is it is less confident in predicting because there is more variation so how do you how do you take this standard deviation how do you calculate these standard deviation that we need to check when we solve more problems when we consider hands on session so as i said standard deviation is helping in weather forecasting it is also helping in healthcare centers it is widely used in insurance analysts and statisticians in healthcare industry now how this insurance companies are calculating the standard deviation and predicting what the age of individuals they provide insurance and what is there any variation exist among the age of the individuals so like this you have standard deviation of the age of individuals they provide insurance for so they can easily understand uh, the variation exist in the age of an individual it is also uh, helping uh, statisticians in healthcare the usage of the healthcare so that they can know how much variation is in uh, in usage to expect in a given month or a quarter or a year so based on the time you can just predict it is also helping real estate standard deviation is also helping in real estate how so the real estate agents calculate the standard deviation of a house price in a particular area so they can inform their clients of the type of variation in the house price they can expect because we can't predict uh, the people who are coming to them or a clients those who are expecting uh, different prices of uh, different variations of the house like 1 bhk 2 bhk 3 bhk so so they need to prefer some uh, values for the different price group of uh, house so they need to help these kind of uh, uh, variations when when they have with the variations with the data so they can confirm the their clients or they can inform their clients the type of variation in the house house price so i'm not telling you variation in the house the variation in the house price okay so standard deviation of this uh, like uh, you we, we have a square foot square feet okay square feet of a house how it varies from one square feet to other square feet so we can expect in terms of square feet of the house in a particular area and what type of variations you have and you can just inform their clients on the same so how does this uh, square feet area depends based on the area also and the um, uh, the amount of uh, value that you are paying will be varied based on the square feet if it is 40 60 if it is 20 30 if it is 15 40 so it varies based on the square feet or the dimension i can say so you just need to predict the house value based on these variations so variance I would like to confirm again or stress again variance or variations in the data. If it is more, you can just easily analyze what it is. If it is less, you can uh, you can uh, less prediction. So you don't have uh, that much of uh, huge predictions that you can just do it. So you also have standard deviation in HR, that is human resource, where uh, the HRs will have. Uh, often calculating the uh, uh, management of salaries in providing salaries to the employees. So standard deviation of salaries in a certain field so that they can know what kind of variations in salaries to offer to a new employees when there exists a new employee. So they need to calculate what kind of salary we can fix for an employee 
when they come for a particular job. So we have different designations, assistant, associate, and next level, manager, TL, and we have different plenty of levels. So for those levels, we just need to fix one standard a salary for a, an employee who are joining the organization. So this standard deviation helping the HR to fix those kind of variation in the salary to our new employee. So this is how we have come across the way uh, importance of measure of dispersions and measure of central tendency. So these are basical basic moment. So basic moment that is helping a business decision. So that's the reason these two are considered to be as two important objectives of this today. So let me show you one more so that I can just uh, quickly brush up the things which is required for data science. So as you can see on the screen, it is all about uh, data science. So where and all you do require studying the COVID-19 virus and coming up with the variants, vaccine or a treatment, fraud detection, automation in customer care, healthcare recommendation, fake news detection, e-commerce and entertainment recommendation system and many more. So we have plenty of uh, uh, fields that is opting for uh, data science. We are understanding the data and then we are uh, predicting what could be the result and we are going with that uh, daily uh, uh, results what we are getting from that and we have uh, four kinds of data analytics which is pretty much important in day-to-day uh, uh, -day life uh, that is uh, first is descriptive and is diagnostic and predictive and pres uh, prescriptive so let me give you a simple example and try to make to understand these kind of four type of data analytics when it comes to uh, let me take a, a doctor patient uh, example descriptive explains what happened so the patient when you go go to doctor you just need to explain what happened in the previous two, two days and why you are here so you need to explain the past so based on past history the doctor is going to diagnose explains why it happened it could be the possibilities and you can just take a pre predictive so doctor is taking a chance to predict this could be the possibilities for this uh, health condition. So based on your guidance, based on your inputs, you have been diagnosed by the doctor and it has been uh, described or forecast uh, what might be the uh, solution for the health condition that you are undergoing and you are supposed to provide with the recommendation where it is an action that is based on your forecast so this is the first four, four important data analytics which is required in all the fields first you need to descriptive what happens the past history and based on that you need to diagnose what could be the uh, possibilities that has been happened so far and you just need to forecast what might be happen the next coming and you need to be ready cautious and uh, uh, take some actions on that and then need to conclude or solve it. So that is how you just go ahead and find out, uh, finish it off. So when you go further, you have project management methodologies like uh, KDD, SEMA and uh, CRISP-DM. We follow CRISP-DM, which is better when compared to the other models. So we also have uh, uh, a comparison here, selection, uh, it is a sample. So where we understand the data in CRISP-DM, it is a pre-processing, it is explore, where explore and sample put together data understanding and selection pre-processing put together data understanding. Transformation or modify is nothing but data preparation in uh, CRISP-DM. So data mining is there, deployment. So even after everything evaluating the model, you have to deploy in some model that is taken care. But in KDD and SEMA, we are not understanding the business problem. So which is more important when you are dealing with client. So that is what 
crisp dm is doing until it get deployed to the things and it is a cyclic uh, way of uh, so data types we have continuous discrete qualitative and quantitative structured or semi structured or unstructured so all things you need to understand uh, when it comes to data types so big data versus non big data cross sectional balanced imbalanced offline data or live streaming data and as we move on we have data collection where you collect from the data whether it is uh, readily available uh, it can be uh, readily available means it is readily available for everyone where you are getting that data primary uh, source of data secondary source of data and based on that particular data what you'll do sampling techniques how do you do sampling techniques and what is inferential statistics so this is also a great step in uh, understanding the data and analyzing uh, and presenting the data which is important step in inferential in, in data science that is uh, uh, inferential data uh, inferential statistics when it comes to data cleaning or uh, data pre processing we have different steps where we follow to uh, convert the raw data or to clean the data we have to follow different steps in uh, programming language so that it will be helpful for to la landing up with a uh, a uh, good solution so when i talk about uh, data cleaning we landing up with exploratory data analysis where you have measure of ten central tendency and what is exploratory data analysis why edi is important how to perform so uh, we have consider automobile data set and i'll show you how it works in a programming hands on so first step as i said mean median mode measure measure of central tendency i've told you already this consider a data set a I have given chocolates for all the children. The first child is getting one, second child is getting two, third child is getting three, fourth child is getting four, and fifth child is getting five. We sum up all these and divide by total. So, how many child are there? How many children are there? So, there are five children. How? What is the total? So, one plus two is three. Three plus three is six. Six plus four is ten. Ten plus five is fifteen. Now, fifteen. So, what is the average or sum or mean? so sum divided by total number of items so total is 15 chocolates i have divided to five children what is the mean value average one can get 3 now what is the me median middle most value so in this middle most value 3 is the middle most value and here you can just see the mean value and the median value same if there is no difference between mean and median hence you can say there is no outlier so there is no much a uh, difference now when i say difference between mean and median there exists an outlier and which is that outlier let me say that considering data set again i have five child i have uh, 60 chocolates i have divided that but it is not regular divided so i like the fifth child the most hence i have given 50 chocolate to him and all the other uh, childs are getting 1 2 3 4 and the respective uh, chocolates but when i calculate mean it is 60 divided by 5 and it is 12 does all the childs are getting 12 or very nearer to that no you are not getting that much of value so now when you calculate the median that is middle most value ordered is 3 now there we have a lot many difference between mean and median that is we have at least minimum of eight difference 12 minus 3 is uh, uh, 8 or 9 you you have a uh, uh, lot many difference when you compared with the mean and median value so hence you can decide there exist an outlier later later you can ch check what is the outlier so here you can see one child is getting all the packs of uh, chocolates that is 50 chocolates that is outlier where we can uh, easily understand 50 is an outlier now how do you calculate the mode here if uh, all the data set in in the data set we have numeric value for mean value and median value when we have non numeric we will be going to mode so we have choco mango mango flavor apple orange flavor so here mango is repeated twice hence we have a uh, uh, mode is 
uh, mango. So if if mode is one and two, if mode is two, then it is bimodal. When it is greater than two, it is multimodal. So it is data which is repeated more number of times is considered to be as mode. So when it comes to uh, exploratory data analysis, we get the maximum insights from the data set. Uh, when you are dealing with data analysis, it is uh, able to un understand when you have a different structure in that and you can extract more important uh, uh, variables from the data set. So detect outliers, anomalies and then uh, anomalies are problems. You can just detect that uh, different uh, problems that occur in the data set. Test underlying assumptions and determine the optimal factor settings. Let me give you one scenario and ask you a question so that you can just answer in the chat box. No, when you are supposed to consider or when you go to uh, any, when you go to any uh, shop, how do you, uh, based on what parameters you, you, you will buy a particular vegetables or fruits? Can, can you guys uh, let me know on what basis, on what parameters you will buy a vegetables or uh, fruits. Nabila or Vempati Sai Prashant, you can just let me know in the chat box. On what basis you will uh, uh, analyze the vegetables and fruits when you visit a market? You are able to understand a uh, few things and then you are uh, buying these vegetables and uh, fruits. It should be worth, it should be uh, hygienic, it should not be toned. So all these parameters matter a lot when you are uh, checking with the vegetables and fruits. Like the same, when you are buying a bike or a vehicle or a car, so what are parameters you look into that? It needs to have different horsepower when it compares to the other car. So you need to have more horsepower. You need to get a, a worth in buying that particular car because money matters a lot. Even a single rupee matters a lot when you are buying. So you just need to concentrate on different parameters when you are buying a car. So what is the mileage? Yes, yes, Vampati horsepower, uh, mileage and engine capacity and whether it is hatchback or SUV or sedan class. So all these parameters matters a lot when you go into the buying of a vehicle or a car. So let me show you one uh, example based on that and uh, we'll, we'll stop there. So when you consider uh, a particular uh, hands on. So let me show you that. So hope you can see the screen uh, and the uh, Python Jupyter notebook where you can see the uh, before before getting into the actual uh, 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 importance of the or actual conclusion of the data. So first we need to have a, a particular language suitable for analyzing the data. So we here using uh, Python as a language. Where it is performing some numerical calculations. Uh, that is uh, where we have a library called NumPy. Uh, and where we are dealing with a data hence it is having a panel data that is pandas and we are uh, uh, making it a graphical representation and easy to analyze uh, the data if it is in excel sheet it is not so good to analyze the data if it is graphically represented then we can just easily identify and understand the graphical 2d notation so it good to understand so, so we have importing we we are importing some libraries that has been provided by python And we load the data set. This is the data set, automobile data set. And we just predict what is the uh, value that we have for the first 
Okay, let me run this one by one. And then uh, we load the data. And then we come back to this and then we have a data. So here you can see the data is given like this. We have a symbolic normalized make fuel type aspiration number of doors body style. Drive wheels, engine location, wheelbase, engine size, fuel system, bore, stroke, compression. So there are plenty of parameters that you need to uh, consider when you are buying a car. So also you can see there are a few question marks in the data. So where the data is not available, there, where the data is missing, at that time what you will do. So you just need to concentrate on understanding the column as per your choice. And I've uh, given that and uh, I'm, I'm just mentioning the calls as uh, columns and I'll be giving you a head of that. So now it has been arranged as per the R requirement. So now we just need to check whether the there is a missing value or not. So we can just describe whether E is null. So E is null is a method that has been uh, performing, that is performing. So how many null values are there in each? So here, even though it is it is showing you a question mark, the uh, Python language is not understanding whether question mark is a null value or not. It is also considered to be as a parameter or a, a number value. Hence, it is not well. Hence, you are not getting uh, it as a missing value, or you can say it is not summing up how many uh, uh, null values you have, but how do you overcome this and detect and remove those? So we just need to have some information on the uh, data what we have. So we have two, 205 entries that is uh, rows and we have 26 columns. So we have 205 non-null values. Everything, all the data is filled up. But we just need to understand whether we have uh, special symbols if there exist in the uh, in the uh, data. So for that we run this particular code and cross verify what all the data that we have in a column. So it is 26 columns you are getting and each unique parameters what you have or unique values what you have in the uh, columns that it is getting described. So here in the second column you have normalized losses where you have question mark as a part of the data. And you also have one more question mark uh, somewhere in the data in other uh, field also where you can see number of doors you have two, four and question mark. So like this, you can just uh, go through that. But it is so difficult to understand where exactly the question mark is there from this uh, data. So it is always good to clean that and then uh, clear those null values and uh, in the form of which is in the form of question mark. But the pandas are not reading them, so we will replace with a NN value. What is NANA? Not a not number, not a number. So hence we have replaced all the question mark as NAN. So when you run this particular line, you can just see it has been replaced with NAN. So all the question mark before it was a question mark. When you see this particular, you can see the question mark has been modified as NA, not a number. So now if I judge whether you have is num null value, you can say yes, we can say we can see that there are some true false. If it is NAN value is null, then you have you'll be having true. But but still it is also difficult to understand from this uh, where, where it is true, where it is false uh, by looking into all the fields, you just need to analyze. So we are able to uh, see only few few columns, not all the few rows, not all the rows. So hence it is quite difficult to understand. For that we will have some. So you can just see the normalized losses have 41. The number of doors have two NN values. The bore has four. The stroke has four. And horsepower has two. And peak RPM has two. So these are all columns. So how do you visualize that particular uh, missing values. So for that we have different uh, 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 format to uh, make them understand or uh, showcase in a graphical representation. So we will see that. 
so this is how it looks when it comes to this so we have 41 in normalized losses where you can see this is a normalized losses second column where all the LOs are NAN so where you have uh, uh, let me show you number of doors is 2 so here when it comes to number of doors here it is number of doors where you can see there is one here and there is one here so it is something like uh, almost nearer to 30 or 30 or uh, 29 or 31 32 so it is showing the column number so where exactly it is okay so it is this graph is helping us to make sure that which column has more or which column is having what this yellow color is differentiating with the number of nan values so for that we have this particular line where you have e is null data frame is provided with the information will be used to label the columns and rows so c bar is whether to draw uh, if i if i make it as true you can see so this is giving it's from 0 to 1. It is predicting from 0 to 1. And the yellow color, which is having more yellow color. So 0 means uh, purple color. So 1 is yellow color. So yellow color means it is NAN. All the purple color is something which is signifying, which has the value. Now, how do you replace the missing values? So when I replace the missing values, how do how do you do that so you you are considering some mean value here you can see there is replacing with the mean value so this is one idea where you can just fill the, all the values in the column from the column where you are filling whatever null a so it is whatever fill na na and we have so that column or that particular row will be filled with the mean value of that particular column so you consider all the values and take the divided by total and you calculate the mean value and you will replace those NAN value. So how do you analyze this? How do you ask uh, uh, analytic questions and visualize? So you can just visualize like this. So it is always good to understand these kind of graph. So once you are getting into actual uh, topic. So when I showcase the other map, so it is always not too good to have each individual graphs. So I'll show you how each individual graph, graph you'll be getting. So later you can just understand how the next uh, plot is given. Now, what is important, what we are doing, the main objective is to understand how the horsepower is affecting the price, how the relation between engine size and the price is there, how the mileage on a highway affects the price. So when you go to a showroom, it all depends on the parameters that you are considering, whether it is whether you want a mileage uh, car or uh, horsepower, whether it is having horsepower. So you can see this. These are the slight graph. What you have uh, pair plot? It is depends on the pair what you have. So how horsepower is dependent on price. How uh, highway uh, mileage is depending on the price. So all that single graph is like this, but it is not good to understand each and every point. So we'll just have a relational uh, graph. So where you can just easily analyze from this. Now this relation graph is giving you two, two things. One is fuel type. When I go with the diesel, how it is impacting highway mileage when it is in city and when it is in highway. So this fuel type is dependent on these two and it is affecting other price. So this dependency relation of fuel type with highway and city. So you can just easily understand that as you increase, as you increase the highway, as you increase, it will be more. And you can see there are diesel and gas both are in the good condition as you increase so uh, the city is also having more and highway is also giving more so you can just easily understand that gas is having more so you can just just decide uh, that gas uh, vehicle is good to have good mileage so when i say horsepower when you when you are considering the horsepower how it is impacting the cost 
So here you can just easily understand how the cost or the price is on the y axis and how the horsepower is. So whatever the horsepower lies between 50 to 150, he is having more number of uh, vehicles that has been sold out. So as we move on the number of horsepowers, you can also see that there are few uh, uh, prices are high. So when it is more number of horsepower that is 250 or beyond that, you'll be having more price. And also you can see there is one uh, car that is having a price uh, less than 15,000 uh, ringgits and it is all about with respect to uh, more horsepower. So that will be having less mileage when you have more horsepower. So that is a different uh, case. So we have also have histograph. So which is, which is helping the other way. So horsepower and count the number of uh, cars sold when you have uh, 50 to 120 or 130 more number of cars or the frequency of the cars that has been sold when you have uh, horsepower between 50 to 120. So from this graph easily understand how many cars have been sold when you consider uh, uh, cars having a horsepower of uh, 50 to 120. So then you can easily understand the data. So the graph is helping you to understand. So histogram or histograph is helping you to understand the relation between the price or the count of car number of cars sold uh, depends on the horsepower. So we also have distributed graph with, with I'm sorry guys. So we are understanding the distributed graph. So here you can see understand the density of the uh, car purchased based on the price. So more number of cars price sold uh, in, in between 10,000 to uh, 20,000. We have a peak. So the more number of cars sold here uh, when it is uh, 10,000 to 15,000. Now what is the relation between engine size and the price? Uh, so when I calculate the engine price and size, it is also one more graph where it is easy to understand. So from 100 to uh, 200, you have a, a good price of uh, cars that has been sold based on the engine size. And you also can uh, deal with highway mileage uh, affecting the price. So uh, as you move on uh, with uh, different variations from uh, 25 to 35 or 40, you can see there are more number of cars sold in this price. Okay. So you can also decide based on the uh, number of doors what you have. The four doors are 114 and two doors are 89. So you can just uh, calculate the based on number of doors. So you can see there are more dotted in two doors and uh, less dotted in four doors where you have uh, uh, outliers in uh, both the things, both the columns where you have two doors and four doors. So this simple example is helping you to understand, uh, 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 helping you to understand uh, easily uh, and landing up with uh, uh, considering uh, uh, a car based on your uh, based on your choice, based on your decision. So this is helping you to decide uh, which one you can just go ahead and we, which one you can just buy. So these kind of uh, uh, hands-on session, we can just do it when you uh, get into the actual uh, course or you can just go ahead with uh, understanding the course in detail one by one uh, and understanding the most of the uh, 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 Python or R language uh, when you consider the course as a main course. So this is all about for today. 
and uh, uh, if you have any doubts regard to this you can just question in the chat box you can just uh, post it in the chat box and also we have uh, uh, and also we have uh, our website where you can just come across with these kind of uh, uh, courses that will be able to understand you uh, as, per, as per the requirement uh, in the market so that you can just go through the uh, Facebook page since we are very uh, actively uh, updating the uh, courses that has re required uh, in the global market. You can just subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can also uh, 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 go with the 360 DGTMG website. So it will be helpful for you to understand what kind of courses that we are offering and uh, how this impacting and you are landing up with job guarantee. So job assistance. So 360 DJ is not only providing you the course, but also it is helping you to get a job. So it is uh, very helpful for a particular individual who is looking for a data science course. So it is always good to have uh, some um, basic knowledge about uh, data science and then step forward to have uh, 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 knowledge in depth and then landing up with a job as per the global requirement. So thank you so much uh, Nabila and uh, uh, Sampath uh, Sai Prashant so for attending this uh, uh, session. So hope it is good to have uh, you in the session. So it might uh, uh, affect this and you can just convey the same to your friends so that you can uh, go through the websites, whatever it has been uh, posted in the chat box. You can just make a note of it. And if you have something to discuss, you can just uh, mention it in the chat box. Uh, Nabila, it is, uh, it is not possible. Uh, the slides are not provided outside the uh, uh, public. So when you join the courses, you will be getting all the resources in uh, a platform where you will be getting access to uh, recording videos, live sessions, everything. But uh, right now it is not possible to share the slides. So, uh, so you can just go through the uh, notes or, uh, or Google it, uh, whatever the points you have noted down while I'm brushing up uh, all the points what I have uh, mentioned, you could have uh, noted down somewhere and you can just brush it up. And also you can just go with the uh, uh, 360 digit EMG uh, website so that you will be getting all the informations there. Okay, Vampati Sai Prashant and uh, Nabila. So good to see and you can just uh, uh, wind up. We can just wind up if you don't have anything to discuss. And also, it is good to uh, have your LinkedIn profile. Uh, keep keep posting your uh, interest in uh, technical things. Where we are active in LinkedIn, also you can just go with uh, uh, 360 DHG TMG, where you will be provided with all the uh, simple. What's the name of the square graph? Histogram. Nabila, it is histogram. That is a bar graph. So where it is giving you a, a example or explanation of uh, plenty of things. So histogram is most of the, the data scientist will be using or data engineer will be using those concepts. The graphical representation, it is good to have scattered plot uh, and uh, distributed graph and uh, relational graph when you have to uh, come across relation between two parameters, more than two parameters rather I can say and histograph. I'll just mention that uh, yeah, heat map is also same thing when it is uh, uh, when you want to get the information which is uh, dependency with all the parameters if not only I can I can suggest that only price and engine uh, size is uh, compared uh, the price is compared with all the parameters then you can just go out with heat map 
so understanding heat map itself uh, takes one hour to uh, understand uh, one hour to understand uh, heat map it is so difficult it's not so difficult once you understand it will be easy but it takes time to understand heat map so it also depends on the values what you are using and uh, there are few positive values negative values why this, there is a positive values negative values what is the color combinations why the color is so dull and uh, dark somewhere so how these are impacting how the library package is providing us these values so all these you need to understand when you come actual with the actual uh, problem statement then only you can just decide why heat map is used uh, hope uh, prashant i have answered your question Okay, thank you so much. Uh, if you have anything to discuss, you can just uh, put it in the chat box. Otherwise, we can just wind up the session. Okay, guys, have a nice week, uh, week ahead, and have a nice time. Stay safe and uh, uh, be healthy. Take care of your health and be safe. You're welcome, Nabila. You're welcome. Vampati Sai Prashant. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Nabila. Thanks, Vampati Sai Prashant. Thank you so much.